Hey folks, Larry Wingett here. Hope you can join me for uh, Volume 1 of Ask Larry Anything on Facebook Live. If you're familiar with my stuff and following me for a while, you know that I used to do Ask Larry Anything on YouTube, where people would submit their questions in writing to me. And you can still do that if you want to, and I'll just answer them here. You just go to info at LarryWingett.com and say you want to ask me a question on uh, Ask Larry Anything. But uh, this seems to be a better way to do it now. We get people involved quicker. Uh, the answers are truly spontaneous. For those of you in the past who have doubted the fact that, that uh, it takes me some time to come up with all this stuff, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't take any time at all to be able to answer with clarity. You know why? And I want to cover that at the beginning of this session. It's easy to know where you stand on any issue when your core values are clear. When you know absolutely what you believe in, what you stand for, what you will and will not put up with, uh, then answers become very easy. So I see a bunch of you are here with me already, and if you have a question, be sure to ask it over uh, typing it in, and I'm going to do my best to keep up with you. There's Deborah and Walter and Jeff and JL and Jordan, and uh, if you're here, give me a big thumbs up and ask the first question. we got truly a bunch of you here already. Glad to hear, uh, listening, glad to be here listening to someone who voices reason. I appreciate that, Dave. There's Tom and Eric and Bogdan and there we go. Uh, Deborah says, my adult daughter is living with me with her three small children. She is so disrespectful and I am heart sick. What do I do? Well, I tell you what, I don't tolerate disrespect from anybody. I mean nobody. We teach people how to treat us. Deborah, you have taught her it's okay to be disrespectful to you. And you have to now give her a new lesson in teaching her that it is not okay to be disre disrespectful to you. Explain to her very quietly and calmly, sitting around the kitchen table, exactly what the offenses are. Line them out. Now here's another suggestion. Write them down. And so you can go to a sheet of paper and say, right here, this is what you said on this date at this time. This is how I felt about what you said. And let me tell you, this is my house and my rules. And that's the way I believe it is. She is there as your guest. She is there as your guest. And she needs to treat you as her host and lay it out, the specific offenses and what you, from this point on, will not tolerate under your own roof. I don't give a damn whether it's your daughter, your grandkids, uh, your best friend, your husband, your wife, your sp I don't give a damn who it is. Nobody gets to disrespect you. And if you put up with it, it's not her fault, Deborah. That's your fault. What you endorse, what you put up with, you endorse. What you put up with, you condone. Stop condoning her bad behavior. That's how you do it. Uh, hello from so many people. There's Samuel and Angie and Ruth and Sarah and so forth. Uh, Walter says, what is the best way to grill an NFL jersey, charcoal or gas? Ha ha. Listen, I think probably uh, gas would work better on that sort of deal. Uh, Steve Gamlin comments on teaching respect. Dead nuts accurate. <laughs> Dead nuts accurate. I haven't heard that one before. Christine Shaw. How do you, Kyle, how do you handle PETA telling you not to eat meat when it's just the natural order? You know, uh, I, I try to pick my battles, and if you guys, you guys know me, I, I can turn anything into a battle. Uh, you know, I respect whatever people want to eat, and I made that post the other day how 84% of vegans come back to eating meat at some point. People got mad at me. I don't make up the statistics, folks. And by the way, that study was done by a vegetarian group. Uh, they're the ones who said, Y'all come back to us uh, eventually, so that's why I made a joke and say, so how do you like yours, medium rare? Boy, people got pissed off, which kind of amazes me. I don't care, and they thought it was about me. I don't care what people eat. I don't impose the fact that I eat meat on anybody. If you don't like the fact that I go right over there, it's just right over there, to my smokers and my charcoal grill and my Traeger and my big Meyer and Mixon smoker and and by the way, tonight I'm putting on a 14-pound brisket that is just going to be amazing. And have my kids over tomorrow night, and we're going to have a big celebration. So anyway, but I don't tell anybody they got to eat the meat. Just don't tell me I have to eat like you do. Let's all eat what we want to eat, 
uh, what makes sense to eat in the quantities that make sense so you can stay healthy. And I believe, and I'm certainly not a doctor, so you go to any nutritionist or dietitian, uh, and, and I just think you eat the right quantities and what makes sense for you and your body so you can maintain the health that you believe you deserve. Um, I told my son this morning, and he changed his tune real quick. I suppose you're talking about the respect thing. Yeah, absolutely. They'll change their tune that quick when you say, hey, you know, it's an old line, and please don't get offended by this if you're offended by cussing, but I heard this a long time ago. It's a line I like. This is some shit up with which I will not put. I like that line. I'd like to have that on a t-shirt. This is some shit up with which I will not put. And I make it real clear. You all have seen me on my Facebook page. I don't put up with anybody's crap. You can disagree. And uh, Deborah, that's what you can tell your daughter. If you don't like how I'm doing things, feel free to disagree with me. But it's still my house. And so we all need to draw lines in the concrete and say, we're not going to cross those lines. Again, that's about clarity around your core values and your belief system. Jerry, um, I just missed your question, Jerry. Jerry, retype it in. This thing's on this particular program I use. They roll really fast. And I'm just not good enough to get it to go back down. Uh, Jordan says, 24 hours, low and slow, makes them delicious breath. Delicious person. Jordan, I can go about 13, 14 usually to get it hovering around the 200 to 205 and then pull it. And uh, Myron Mixon taught me that the key is uh, resting. And that's one of the big mistakes I've made in the past. I didn't let my brisket rest long enough. you got to go at least four hours. There you go. Bring the brisket. I'll bring the bourbon. I got both. I got that going for me. Today I learned that simply paying a fee does not allow for use of your service. Huh. I don't understand exactly what you're talking about there, Shane. Today I learned that simply paying a fee does not allow for use of service. Who knew? Well, now you know, I guess. And everybody decides how they're going to do business. Speaking of that, uh, I think probably some of you uh, saw the post that I made this week about paying a fee and, and so forth. The guy uh, told me that he had every right to disrespect me, even on my page, because he was my customer because he had bought several of my books and that pretty much I had to take it. And then he dared me. He dared me. How stupid of him to delete his comments and to ban him. I said, hey, no problem. Click, you're done, you're gone. So easy. Why do people get so full of themselves? And to challenge somebody over an issue of respect, especially me who talks about that. How can one person hope to help change our nation, national racial divide? Brian, I talked about this a lot in my book, um, What's wrong with damn near everything? We have so many issues facing our country right now. Uh, David Morales, you're right, I use mesquite. I got a big pile of mesquite out there. We, I talked about this, Brian, in the book, uh, What's Wrong with Damn Near Everything, how the collapse of core values is destroying us and how to fix it. And I ended the book by saying we have so many issues, and we are trying to fix all of those issues. And here's the deal. You can't. We are never going to change our country. Our country is exactly the way it wants to be. It wants to be racially divided. Yeah, don't believe the BS that you see on the news. We want to be this way. We want to have all the idiocy that we see going on in every area of life and business and government. We want it to be that way. And none of us can fix any of it. There you go. Am I giving up? Nope, I'm not giving up. I am only saying the only thing I can do is affect it in my own personal life. That's really it. I can hope to then influence the people who are very close to me, my family, my kids, my grandkids. Uh, I can do what I can do within my family. And if every single person gave up, that's right, I'm telling you, give up on trying to change the damn world. Damn world don't want to change. That's the way it is. Stop trying to change the world and start trying to focus on their own lives. Everybody's got so much criticism for everybody else in the whole world about how they ought to change the world. Forget them. For, forget them all. Change what you do every single day. Be a little kinder today to one person. Be a little kinder tomorrow to two people. You know, that's how we change the world. One person at a time in their own families, in their own lives, can then make a difference and the world, world will ultimately change. Uh, there you go. That's my opinion on that. If everything was great in this country, there would be nothing to complain about. Well, we got plenty to complain about. Uh, Matt says, uh, that, thanks, Jeff. Matt says, worry about the things you can't control and let the rest go. You're, you're absolutely right. You know, I see people bitching about the price of gasoline. 
I have found myself in that situation before. And here's the deal. I can't affect the price of gasoline. The only thing I can do is affect my own personal income so I can afford it no matter what it goes to. We have so many people wanting to control the way everything is in, in, in the whole world and especially control the way other people live their lives, and you can't do that. The only thing you can do is live your own life to the best you possibly can. That's what it comes down to. Uh, Eric says, yay, Larry, or yeah, Larry. Dave Gordon says, thumbs up. Rosemary says, thumbs up. There's Peter and Kevin and Carl and so forth. Uh, listen, folks, I'm not going to let these things go very long. Let, uh, so if you have a question, get it posted real quick. Jerry, I never saw yours, so jump back in there and, and give it to me. God told me one day to worry about challenging my, changing myself only. Let him worry about the rest. If that's what God told you to do, I would suggest you go with what she said. Woo! That's going to piss a whole lot of folks off. Uh, Rob Hunter says, Larry, what's your take on the disrupting, uh, disruptive technology startups like Uber and Airbnb? Is it okay to flaunt existing outdated legislation in the name of progress? You know, that's how things change. And uh, I do think that we're going to see more and more disruptive technology. And so we better get used to it. And I, I do think that the way we've always done things uh, is going to have to change. And this is the new normal. So to get stuck in outdated modes... Hanging on to them it is not going to work. Now, it's okay to do that if you're willing to have a smaller market share in a very defined market. Do that and go with it. If that's, But you have to make that decision. But we're going to have to look at legislation and, and, and change to keep up with technology. We're just going to have to. Miguel! Hey, Miguel! Start by making a difference right where you're at. You're right. And don't worry about what anyone else is doing. Absolutely true. Uh, triplet power for 10-2. There's Helene, and she has triplets that were born on my birthday next Monday. And so we're all celebrating our birthdays together. Matt says, spend more time worrying about what we can do, less what we can't do. Absolutely true. Uh, and happy birthday to them, Helene. I appreciate that. Two Eagles Marcus, how did you become the realest MS <laughs> You know, uh, some people say that you, you get that way as you get older. I didn't. Uh, you, you know, everybody talks about those little angels or the little devil a little devil on one side, a little angel, and how they fight back and forth. I shot both those little jerks a long, long time ago, and I say what I truly believe. But I, I can tell you that it comes down to this, Marcus, that it comes down to clarity. Uh, I was taught from the time I was born till the time I left my mom and daddy's house that uh, there's a right way to do things, there's a wrong way to do things. And once you corrupt yourself, corrupt your convictions and your clarity and your core values one time, there's no getting them back. And so I, I really thought long and hard before I ever took any action. And I realized that every action had a consequence. And because I was raised that way, I have clarity around what I believe. It's sort of how I started this whole thing off. Uh, that when you have clarity, then decision-making is that quick for you. And you don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about, is this right or is this wrong? And if you have to ask yourself that question, trust me, it's wrong. Jerry, Larry, I'm with a client, and she has a question. She wants to know how she as an office manager, makes the boss fulfill his commitment to his customers. Well, that's tough. Uh, first of all, again, I would go back to just what I told Deborah. I would document. I would have it in writing, not an opinion. Nobody gives a damn about your opinion or my opinion. But when you go in with documentation said, you know, we said we would do this, and boss, we did this. And so somewhere there's a collapse in here between what we say we're going to do and what we actually end up doing. Help me reconcile that. I want you to explain that to me, how I'm going to reconcile that in my mind, because I don't feel good that we promise one thing and deliver another. Help me with that, boss. Put him on the spot in that way. But you can't do that with, you know, I think we just don't treat our customers right. We don't do what we said. No, you need to be very specific. Have it in writing. Work from documentation, not from thought. And that goes in every area of your life and your business. Work from documentation, not from thought. And people respect documentation much, much more. Uh, Kim says, what's the best thing a parent can do to teach respect to their children? Well, it starts with respecting you. You cannot ever let a child by with disrespecting you. Then you teach them to dis to respect their siblings. I just kept my little grandkids uh, uh, last weekend. I had them for four days while their mom and daddy got a break to have their anniversary. First little vacation they've had by themselves in a while. And uh, my grandkids, they don't give me any lip. And I love them to death, and I hug them and kiss on them all the time. And we have more fun, but there's a line that they know they cannot cross with, with Pop. And I make them respect each other. I make them talk to each other, look each other in the eye, say, I'm sorry, you're not allowed to get, and all that sort of stuff. So it starts with res teaching respect for mom and dad. 
than teaching respect for your siblings, than teaching respect for everybody you come in contact with. It goes a long ways to teach your kids to look people in the eye, stick your hand out, say, hello, my name is, shake their hand, and appreciate the just existence of other people. You can always disapprove of somebody's actions, but you've got to teach people to respect the fact that other people are. Every person deserves your respect. Their actions don't. And so it's okay to criticize actions and behavior, but teach people to respect other folks in that way. But it starts at home with parents and then their brothers and sisters. Um, core values, you're absolutely right, Eric. <clears throat> the teenager and I, Jamie says, are going to Texas to volunteer with Samaritan's Purse. Good for you. God bless you. Jimmy says, sorry I'm late. That's okay. Uh, Dave, Larry, what's your fix to our federal tax code? You know, I actually like a lot of what's being said right now. I do believe that the devil is in the details, just like what's being said. Here's what I believe, though. I believe if you put any more money, if all he was able to get passed, all he was able to get passed was doubling the standard deduction, which is what he's talking about, you'd put, for the average family, a couple of thousand more dollars in their pockets. That makes a big, big difference in people's lives. And uh, all the Democrats and all the naysayers and all the people in the world that put him down, and I'm not going to make this political, I'm not, uh, I'm just not. But I will say this, you put a couple of thousand dollars in people's pockets, and uh, you've made a big difference in the way everything in this country works. And if you can make it easier on people to file their taxes so they're not having to spend as much money to get it done and get it down to one sheet of paper, that makes a big difference in the emotions of people. And if you can help a business, especially a small business, keep a little bit more of their tax money, just a little bit more, they'll be able to hire more people, maybe buy some new stuff, maybe move some jobs uh, uh, into their company and things will get better. But here's the most important thing to remember about the tax code. It's not, it, don't worry a whole lot about just how it looks on paper. Realize that the stock market went into a huge, uh, boom, uh, and, and consumer confidence went way up and hiring did start to take place. All because we felt better economically about things. Giving people a chance to feel better about their money and about their taxes will change things dramatically because money, as much as I hate to admit it, and I've talked a lot about this on Fox News when it comes to investing and investors and the stock market, money is emotional. And if we feel better, if our emotions are better surrounding uh, our money and how it's being used and how much of it we get back from the government, then things will improve. Uh, there you go. Respect others, Jeffrey says, and that your children will mimic you. That's absolutely true. Thanks for the happy birthday wish, uh, early one. I won't be doing this next week on my birthday. I can guarantee you that. Uh, I'm going to Sedona, Arizona, going to eat a little Mexican food and have some fun, take Leon with me. Great little place up there that lets the pets come. Darren says, which do you think is more important, respect yourself or to love yourself? Well, I think that it's hard to respect somebody who's not very lovable. And it's awfully hard to love somebody who's not very respectable. So I think, Darren, it comes down to you got to give yourself something, uh, recognize things in yourself that you can love about yourself. Uh, and from that will come respect. And so I think they kind of go hand in hand. So you gotta got to work on that. Uh, all right, folks, here's the deal. This recording is about to become and iTunes podcast. I've decided to take all of my videos and the Facebook Live stuff and make them a podcast. I'll be doing some special podcasts. I'm going to announce that on uh, my Facebook page probably next week. I've got the podcast now set up. We're moving these recordings. It'll be an audio podcast. If you miss it and want to listen to it in your car or whatever, or on your uh, iPhone as you're driving around or in your house on Alexa, we'll play that for you. Uh, you can listen to my podcast there. So I'm going to finally join that group. Technology finally got to me. So, And encourage other people to listen to podcasts, if you will. Uh, I would appreciate that. So this will become an audio podcast along with all of my other video recordings from the past. past. We're converting the MP4s over to MP3s right now. We're going to have a bunch of new stuff on there as well. Richard said, crunching the numbers, setting the budget, going for the dream. <laughs> That's in response to uh, my post today about better to have some budget behind you and some facts behind you instead of just a dream. 
Darren says, thank you so much. Uh, getting lots of thumbs up there. Hey, folks, this has been a lot of fun. I like to keep these things under 20 minutes. We're at 19 minutes, 32 seconds right now. When I post this, if you would, and you know some people who could benefit from this, share it. Think about what you'd like to ask me. I'm going to try to do an Ask Larry Anything Facebook Live every single week. And so think about questions you might have. If you want to just write it in, write it into info at LarryWingett.com. Thanks so much for being here. Adios. Bye-bye.